The big chill just in time for the big rush. Temperatures taking a tumble across the GTA, tracking the weather whiplash on this Wednesday night. Good evening. From a record high to well below freezing in just a couple of hours, not only is this seasonal swing hard to prepare for, but it can also be dangerous. This intense cold front already bringing hydro outages. And if you're heading out on the roads, you're being warned things could get dicey. CTV's Mike Walker is live with tonight's top story. Mike. Well, Michelle, Nathan, earlier today, people were wearing spring jackets, even shorts now bundled up in layers. And it's not only the below freezing temperatures that are of concern. Forecasters warning that roads could be snow covered and icy tonight and powerful wind gusts are causing power outages right across the city. Frigid and blustery this afternoon as the temperature quickly plummeted from the double digits to below the freezing mark. Crazy wacky weather. One day, nice, uh, feel like wearing shorts earlier today, and it's freezing cold right now. The cold front bringing powerful wind gusts reaching nearly 80 kilometers an hour, causing scattered power outages across the city. Toronto Hydro reporting 5,000 customers were left in the dark this afternoon in Etobicoke. The winds also blowing debris from this construction site, knocking out power in the DuPont and Dufferin area. In affected areas, traffic lights are out, businesses have closed. It's, it's quite cold. Customers like Barath eagerly waiting in the dark. And everything is out. Even our heaters, everything is connected and everything is out. A dramatic swing from earlier today that saw people out in shorts and spring gear just before the temperature dropped, Toronto reached a record high of 16.5 degrees. 17 minutes later, as the front, front blew through, we dropped down to 6 degrees, so basically 10 degrees in 17 minutes. The, the magnitude of the, the temperature drop is not something that we see very often. This morning, the skating rink at Nathan Phillips Square was covered in water and off limits. This afternoon, people were back out on the ice. But despite the weather warnings, some were not prepared for the sharp change in conditions. We didn't thought it was going to be this so windy and cold. I'm wearing my uh, spring jacket, so this is not good. It's too cold. <laughs> Crazy, it's so cold. It's like the other day. It was thunderstorming, now it's freezing. The National Weather Agency warning snow and ice pellets could impact the commute this evening and lead to slippery conditions on the roads. Try to slowly, hopefully get there safely. The city says its crews are on standby. We're gonna be moving our winter salters across the city at various strategic locations so they can get to any particular location sooner than later. A weather roller coaster ride. Everyone was saying there's gonna be a change and I was skeptical, but uh, now I'm, I'm a believer. And a reminder that winter isn't over yet. Now, if you are heading out on the roads tonight, forecasters are urging you to be prepared to adjust your driving to the road conditions. The good news, however, is that this latest belt of cold weather is expected to be short-lived with warmer temperatures expected as we head into the weekend. Reporting live, I'm Mike Walker. Nathan, back to you. Thanks, Mike. And here's another live look at the city tonight as the sun goes down. Such a change from how we started the day. Jessica Smith is here with a look at the current conditions. You did warn us. <laughs> I did. Uh, the thing is, is it's going to be kind of a slow moving system now. So we're already seeing snow through areas through Barrie, through Halton Region, through Georgetown, Kitchener, and it's going to make its way towards us. This is lake effect snow, and it is going to be uh, challenging when it comes to those driving conditions because of the reduced visibility. Wind gusts right now in and around the city at 91 kilometers an hour. So even when the snow is light, it is going to be very hard to see. We're so blanketed by those special weather statements here in the GTA, the snow squall warnings, the flash freeze warnings, it is going to be an interesting night. Just be careful out on the roads. Temperature wise, we are at minus four right now. It feels like minus 14 and it only gets colder. Coming up, I'll have a full look at your long range forecast. Michelle. Thank you, Jess. If you or maybe someone you know were caught in this, it's been a mess of a commute today. A serious crash over the noon hour, prompting an hours long closure of all lanes of the southbound DVP from the 401 to York Mills Road. Police citing reports of a car hitting a wall. Paramedics say a man and woman were rushed to hospital with critical life threatening injuries. The roadway is now back open to traffic that happening over the last hour. Appeal police officers recovering after being hit by a car last night in Brampton. Police had responded to a crash on Chincuzi Road between Beauvair Drive and Williams Parkway. While they were at the scene, the officer was hit by a passing vehicle. Paramedics say the officer was taken to hospital with serious injuries, but is expected to survive. There's been no word on potential charges against the driver involved. 
Straight ahead, new confirmed cases of measles here in the GTA, the potential exposure sites, and what health experts say all of us should be looking out for. That's coming up. A warning about some of the details in this next story. A student at OCAD University says she's scared for her safety. The reason anti-Semitic graffiti sprawled on a stairwell. Tonight, her demands for greater action from the school. CTV's Janice Golding is live with more on this. Janice. Hi, Michelle. Yes, a student here at OCAD University tells CTV News she hasn't been back to class for weeks, alleging she's the target of anti-Semitism. Zionism equals death and then my name. How did you feel when you saw that? I had never felt so sad in my life. Sam is in her final year at OCAD University, but she hasn't attended class for more than two weeks, saying she's afraid for her safety. It says, uh, I'm going to kill you, and it has bloody handprints on it. The former president of the university's Jewish club says OCAD has a yellow staircase, which spans six floors in its main building, where free expression is encouraged. But Sam says the staircase has become a forum for anti-Semitic hate. They were all like, Horrible things about me, horrible things about Jews. When she saw these messages, Sam says she and her friends started painting words promoting peace on the staircase's walls. So here in the middle, you can see where I wrote, peace starts with you, and then... Then F you Zionists. And almost immediately afterward... I started getting death threats. There was even sexual connotations relating to my mother and Hamas. Hillel Ontario, an organization dedicated to Jewish campus life, called on university leaders to do more, saying the appalling way in which Samantha was targeted at OCAD unfortunately follows an alarming and unacceptable pattern that Hillel is tracking across Ontario campuses, whereby Jewish students are singled out and demonized for simply being Jewish. Meanwhile, a statement from OCAD reads, discrimination in all forms, including anti-Semitism, is completely against the values of OCAD University. Also saying, as soon as it was reported, the university cooperated with the Toronto Police investigation and removed the graffiti. OCAD U has been supporting the impacted student throughout this process. This one, I wrote, our love is stronger than your hate, is covered in blood. And then someone wrote, your hands reek of death and the blood of the innocents in Palestine. Yeah. But Sam says to date she has not received an adequate response from the university. There was talks about a meeting two weeks ago and they still haven't followed up about that. It took them forever. It took them days to shut down um, and paint over the stairwell. And while the messages may no longer be on campus walls, Sam says she and other Jewish students on campus will never be able to erase the pain or fear they've engendered. Sam says she'd really like to finish out her year in a few months along with other students in her class. However, she says the future of her education is really up in the air. Reporting live from Janice Golding, now back to Michelle and Nathan. Thank you, Janice. Elsewhere, residents of an overflow shelter in Mississauga say they're sick of what they're calling disgusting conditions, and they're calling for change. But as CTV, John Woodward reports the overburdened system doesn't give them anywhere to go. Videos show cockroaches on the doors and bugs crawling on some of the toilets. There's garbage in the halls daily, say residents of this motel recently turned into an overflow homeless shelter in Mississauga. Cockroaches and bed bugs, they bite us like nothing else inside. Adebola Ojomu came to Nigeria with her six kids in October. She said she sleeps with all of them in the same room in conditions that are worse than where she came from. My five-year-old is saying, Mommy, let's go back to Nigeria. We are not suffering like this in Nigeria. Personally, I think it should be condemned. Unable to cook in the hotel room, Deborah Cavallo says she's left eating frozen food. I am mortified. I've never seen conditions like this. This shelter is an overflow building in Peel region in a system city officials say is so overburdened it swelled to more than 400 percent of capacity, some 1,200 people. Others even denied these conditions. Two people have died after being turned away from Peel shelters in the past few weeks, leading one potential candidate to call for federal funds. The federal people are pushing down here and it's up to the municipality in the region to fix it. Well, we can't fix it, and we don't have the financial to fix it. It's operated by an agency called Services and Housing in the province, which says it had exterminators to tackle the infestation this week. There's only a couple of rooms that have had infestation that were treated in the last week. Ojomu says she can't find an apartment for her family on welfare rates. Now, that's why we are stuck here. We cannot go anywhere. Exploring other options, but with the Peel system so full, there aren't many places to go. John Woodward, CTV News. Just ahead, sports celebrities shut out from gambling ads. Will the play help protect susceptible young people?
The Canadian Football League will conduct its own investigation after a statement of claim was filed against the Toronto Argonauts quarterback Chad Kelly. Commissioner Randy Ambrosi says the CFL is committed to creating healthy and positive working and playing environments for all those associated with the league and its member clubs. We take the allegations against the Toronto Argonauts and Mr. Kelly very seriously and we have opened an investigation in accordance with the league's gender-based violence policy. A complaint was filed in court last week by a former Argo strength and conditioning coach. She alleges a pattern of harassment by Kelly that included unwanted romantic advances and instances of threatening language. The woman says the team did not act when told of Kelly's behavior. She is also alleging wrongful dismissal after her contract was not renewed. The complainant is seeking financial compensation from both parties. Five members of Canada's 2018 World Junior Hockey Team have chosen to be tried by a jury. Carter Hart, Alex Fermentin, Cal Foote, Dylan Dubé and Michael McLeod were charged with sexual assault last month. Their lawyers say the players are confident that jurors drawn from the community will decide the case fairly after hearing all the evidence. The case relates to an alleged incident at a hotel in London following the team's gold medal win. Hockey Canada and the NHL have each launched their own investigations. The case is due back in court April 30th. A man is recovering from injuries suffered in a stabbing last night in Oshawa. At around 11.15 p.m., officers were called to a home on Esterbrook Drive. They did not find the victim there, but they were soon notified of a vehicle seen driving erratically in Whitby. Police say they found the victim inside that vehicle, and he was taken to hospital in non-life-threatening condition. Investigators say other individuals in the car haven't been cooperating. A 26-year-old man has been charged with obstruct police, while the search for answers continues. Meanwhile, the province's special investigation unit is looking into the death of a 40-year-old man in Toronto. The SIU says the man was stopped by security at the Metro Toronto Convention Centre on Saturday afternoon. He was reported to be showing signs of distress. An off-duty Toronto police officer assisted security staff. The man required medical attention and paramedics took him to hospital where he died. A post-mortem was completed, but the results have not been released yet. Ontario's top court has upheld the life sentence for the Eaton Center shooter. Christopher Husbands opened fire in the food court of the mall in June of 2012, killing two men and wounding several other people, including a 13-year-old boy who was shot in the head. Husbands was initially convicted of murder and sentenced to life, but was granted a new trial in 2019. He was then convicted of manslaughter and sentenced to life with no parole for seven years. His lawyers appealed that sentence calling for a fixed term of 15 years. Today, the court rejected that appeal, saying there is no basis for interfering with the sentence. A prayer walk was held today in the Jane and Driftwood area, attended by provincial representatives and Toronto's police chief. After a pair of shootings in the neighbourhood, Myron Demkew says police want to stay engaged. We see the impact of these events in the community. It's important to double down on our efforts, particularly during these difficult times. Today's prayer, walk, and meeting come after the shooting earlier this month of 40-year-old Adu Buache, a recent arrival from Ghana. A 16-year-old boy survived the shooting nearby the same weekend, with police linking the same suspect to both incidents. The Premier is facing more criticism about former staffers sitting on a panel which chooses the province's judges. The appointees are registered lobbyists through the Attorney General's office, though the Attorney General's office says they passed a screening process. CTV's Queen's Park Bureau Chief Siobhan Morris is live with more. Siobhan. Well, it's pretty normal to see politicians double down on a policy even in the face of pressure. Today we saw the Premier doing what he says is quadrupling down against these appointments. This is going sideways fast. The temperature at Queen's Park turned up over government appointments to a panel that picks judges. I'm not going to double down. I'm not going to triple down. I'm going to quadruple down. To make the Premier is standing by appointing two former staffers to that panel. Staffers who are still in contact with progressive conservatives. The newly appointed chair of the Judicial Appointments Committee is a registered lobbyist who lobbied the government as recently as last week. The opposition alarmed that he's lobbying on behalf of gunmaker Colt Canada, which provides weapons to the armed forces. According to the lobbyist registry, they're after a manufacturing grant. The company has a plant in Kitchener. 
The Attorney General's office says the appointees passed a rigorous conflict of interest screening. We don't cherry pick judges. There's a committee that makes recommendations, Mr. Speaker. There are judges that sit on the committee. But the Premier has made clear he only wants judges he feels will be tough on criminals. They're kicking in doors Order. in the middle of the night, putting guns Order. to people's heads, scaring their children, scaring the families, Order. scaring neighborhoods. The opposition thinks it's a lot of bluster. He's desperate uh, to, to, to not take responsibility for the state of our court system. Why does it have to be somebody so closely connected to the Premier and, by the way, is lobbying for a gun company? While there are no rules keeping lobbyists from taking government appointments... The people who are picking judges on a Monday are then actually making money by lobbying the government on a Tuesday. That's a strange look. That's a bad look. Something Reid thinks the government needs to keep in check. It gets into problems when it's a little too kind with its cronies and pals. That's what was behind the green belt. And right here, this is taking them down the same path. The NDP still wants the government to rescind their appointments to that judicial committee. Leader Marit Stiles says she hasn't seen the premier this worked up since right before he changed his mind on the green belt. Reporting live from Queen's Park, I'm Siobhan Morris. Nathan and Michelle, back to you. Thank you, Siobhan. A ban is now in effect, changing how online gambling is promoted in Ontario. Famous faces from the world of sports as well as other celebrities will no longer appear in ads in an effort to help protect minors. CTV's Raheem Ladani has the details. Instead of seeing Toronto Maple Leafs Austin Matthews solely on the ice or actor Jamie Foxx just in movies, these celebrities have been starring in gambling ads dominating Canadian airwaves. Generally I hear it a lot like when I'm listening to podcasts, it's coming up a lot more. The advertisements are aggressive, like you can't watch a game without seeing the boards. I'm trying to practice here, Wayne. However, beginning Wednesday, current or retired athletes, celebrities and even social media influencers are banned from promoting internet gaming in Ontario unless it's to advocate for responsible gambling. These sports stars are people that the younger generation are going to look up to. What they stand for now, more likely that generation will stand for in the future to come. I think they should have as equal rights as us. They're everyday people and just because they have professions and stuff. Each province has been left to regulate the online gambling industry since Canada legalized single game sport betting in 2021. After receiving plenty of backlash, last summer the Alcohol and Gaming Commission of Ontario agreed on the celebrity ban in an effort to safeguard children and youth who may be susceptible to such advertising content. It is an addiction, of course, and quite honestly can really impact somebody's mental health and their overall well-being in terms of clearly their finances, but also their relationships. And we know from research that it can also lead to suicidal ideation. Between October and December of 2023, iGaming Ontario reports that there were 1.2 million active player accounts. The average person was spending $186 per month, generating more than $17 billion in total wagers. I actually am a partaker myself in sports betting, but I just had to put myself to like a $5 limit just so I don't uh, break the bank there. These regulations do not restrict iGaming operators from sponsoring segments in broadcast programming. Advocates say until all ads are banned, minors and high-risk individuals will remain vulnerable. Raheem Ladani, CTV News, Toronto. In Rafa, displaced Palestinians say that aid supplies are barely enough to survive on. Many waited in long lines for sacks of flour at a distribution centre run by the United Nations. The number of trucks entering Gaza has dropped dramatically in recent weeks. The UN says efforts to unload trucks and distribute aid has been affected by Israel's offensive, continued fighting and military restrictions. 138 truckloads entered the territory yesterday. A march is underway to demand the release of hostages being held by Hamas in Gaza. Families of the captives and their supporters are walking from southern Israel to Jerusalem over the next four days. Some of the hostages freed in November join the march today. It will end near the official residence of Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu later this week. Negotiations are continuing in Qatar on a framework deal that would see some of the remaining hostages freed in exchange for the release of Palestinian prisoners and a six-week halt to the fighting. Russian opposition leader Alexei Navalny will be laid to rest Friday following a funeral in Moscow. The funeral will take place the day after tomorrow. And I'm not sure yet whether it will be peaceful 
or where the police will arrest those who have come to say goodbye to my husband. Navalny's widow spoke at the European Parliament. He died earlier this month at a remote Arctic penal colony. Russian authorities say the cause of his death is still unknown, but his widow, supporters, and many Western leaders say they hold Russian President Vladimir Putin responsible. In the U.S., doctors say Joe Biden continues to be fit for duty. The U.S. president left Walter Reed Medical Center today following his annual physical. A summary of the checkup performed by his doctor says Biden is able to fully execute all responsibilities without exemption or accommodation. Uh, the, this is of big interest uh, as the oldest commander-in-chief in American history seeks re-election in November. Biden would be 86 by the end of a second term. Meanwhile, the longest-serving Senate leader in U.S. history is stepping down from the role in November. I always imagined a moment when I had total clarity and peace about the sunset of my work. A moment when I'm certain I have helped preserve the ideals I so strongly believe. That day arrived today. Mitch McConnell has been Senate Republican leader for almost two decades. The 82-year-old says he plans to serve out his current term that ends in 2027. In the UK, a judge has ruled Prince Harry was not improperly stripped of his security detail during visits there. The Duke was challenging a government decision that said he would no longer automatically receive personal security. Instead, it would be on a case-by-case -case basis. Today, the justice said that is not unlawful, irrational, or unjustified. The prince had been getting publicly funded security until he stepped back from his royal duties and moved to California with his wife, Meghan. He plans to appeal. The first U.S. spacecraft to land on the moon in half a century is expected to lose contact with ground control tonight. Odysseus sent back new images today, almost a week after an off-kilter touchdown hindered its communications and solar charging capability. Soon, solar power regeneration will no longer be sufficient to keep the lander running. But flight controllers will try to restart it in three weeks once the sun rises again over the site. In Ottawa's special citizenship ceremony was held today, marking Black History Month. I will faithfully observe the laws of Canada, including the Constitution. Immigration Minister Mark Miller presided over the event, welcoming 19 new Canadians. It was a big moment for all as they received the oath, swearing allegiance to their new country. The Toronto Raptors will go for their fourth win in a row when they host the Mavericks tonight. Quickly, Olenek underneath, Scotty with a slam dunk. Toronto beat the Indiana Pacers 131-22 Monday. It was the first time the Raptors won three straight games all season. Scotty Barnes also recorded his fourth triple-double of the campaign, which is a Raptors season record. Tonight's game with Dallas begins shortly after 7.30. In Houston, Canada's women's soccer team is looking to secure the top seed at the CONCACAF Gold Cup. The 10th-ranked squad is facing Costa Rica in the final Group C game right now. It's currently 1-0 for Canada in the first half. Now, they've already assured themselves a berth in the quarterfinal, but they'll be hoping to improve their draw in the knockout stage, which begins Saturday. The tournament runs until March 10th. Meanwhile, the Professional Women's Hockey League is trying out a couple of new ideas in its inaugural season. Nurse calling for it. One time, muffled shot, they score! Sarah Nurse! The PWHL is experimenting with a playoff format that allows the top seed to choose its opponent. Four of six teams will qualify for the postseason. There will also be a different concept for determining the order of the draft. Teams will be accumulating draft order points from the time they are eliminated. The most successful team from that stretch gets the top pick. Another confirmed case of the measles in the GTHA. A child who passed through Pearson after a trip to Europe is now hospitalized. Coming up, advice from public health officials as they work to track down those who may have been exposed. 
And I'm Pat Foran coming up on Consumer Alert. As the temperature drops, it's important to be careful if you're driving this evening, but you'll also want to watch out for icy walkways and sidewalks. Thousands of people are hurt each year in slip and fall accidents. We have some advice. That story is just ahead. Brief periods of lake effect snow off and on as we head into the early evening. So as Pat mentioned, be careful as you head out on those sidewalks and walkways. Temperature wise, it only gets colder as well as we head throughout the evening. But that's just seasonal. It's just been a while since we've been this cold. Coming up, a full look at your long range forecast and stay with us. We've got another night of great shows for you right here on CTV. It's been a day of wild swings in the weather, and as the temperature drops tonight, we could have slick streets and sidewalks. Every year, tens of thousands of Canadians are hurt in slip and fall accidents, so you want to be prepared for icy conditions. Here's Pat Foran and Consumer Alert. Pat. Nathan and Michelle, it's been a mild winter for many of us, so we haven't had to deal with a lot of ice and snow, but that could change tonight. You may want to be ready with salt and sand to get a grip and avoid a trip to the emergency room. When the streets and sidewalks are covered in ice and snow, it doesn't take much to slip and fall. You could end up with a sprained ankle or a much more serious broken hip. Hillary Polotnik had to visit an emergency room when she broke her wrist. The whole thing happened so fast. One minute I was walking and the next I was on the ground. Catherine Momgreen slipped on her icy driveway and is thankful she wasn't seriously hurt. All I know is that I hit my head really hard. A good first step is using rock salt or ice melters on your walkways and driveway around your home. Before a storm, lay down a thin layer of salt, then another layer during the storm. It can make it easier to shovel and clear away snow and ice. But there are some downsides as salt can seep into porous pavement and damage walkways and driveways. They're all basically one of three compounds, sodium chloride, magnesium chloride, or calcium chloride. And they work slightly differently, but in the end, they're all salts and they can all cause the same damage. Salt can also harm plants and your pet's paws. The best way to minimize damage is to try and use less. Mix in an abrasive like sand for added traction and don't put a lot of stock in ice melts claiming to be environmentally or pet friendly. Ice melts with a coating on them may claim to be less damaging. Once the coating wears off, you're just left with salt anyway. A better plan is to set up a rinse tray at your entrance so you can wash salt from your pet's paws. And when you go for a walk, choose the right footwear, such as boots with non-skid rubber treads. For even more traction, consider a pair of ice cleats, also known as ice spikes, crampons, and micro spikes. They attach to your shoes with rubber harnesses or straps and have spikes or screw heads that dig into the ice to keep you from slipping, which could save you from taking a nasty tumble. And ice spikes are great for traction, especially if you're into winter running or hiking, but they can seriously damage flooring, so remember to take them off before you step inside. On your side, I'm Pat Foran. If you have a consumer story idea, email us at alert at ctv.ca. Yes, lots going on weather-wise today. It's like we've, we've experienced two different days in one. Yeah, it really is strange. It was shorts and t-shirts for some this morning, <laughs> and then the weather just took like a bungee jump. <laughs> that was the end of it, yeah. We went from 16 degrees down to 6 in the span of, I think it was about 17 or 18 minutes. It is intense, and it's going to continue. We're now looking at lake effect snow making its way into the GTA, also impacting the drive in addition to the wind. Weather is brought to you by Train, the most reliable heating and cooling brand. It's hard to stop a train. The number of different kind of uh, forecasts that we experienced today continues. And now we're looking at a few lake effect flurries continuing to make their way in. And that wind is still wicked. We topped out today at about 16.5 degrees. And we are now nowhere near that. And the good news is we're getting towards the tail end of it, but we're still dealing with those really strong wind gusts. We're at minus four. It feels like minus 13. Ottawa, the outlier right now, they're still warm-ish. It's two degrees but it feels like minus five. Northern Ontario, those wind chills into the mid minus 30s. The wind gusts now have dissipated a little. They were at 91 kilometers an hour, maybe 20, 25 minutes ago. Now we're at 74, still very windy. And this continues right through to the start of the day tomorrow. Temperature wise, as we head through the overnight, this is seasonal. We should be at about minus six, minus seven. So this is back to where we should be. But with the wind chill and the wind gusts, it feels so significant. And this is where that chance for flash freezing takes place. 
more so out towards, say, Peterborough, Bancroft, and Kingston. They're looking at those wind chill values in that mid minus 20 range. For us, it is still very significant that minus 15 is nothing to play with. Now, as we get into the day tomorrow, Seasonal. We have the lake effect flurries, a chance of them in the morning, and then we get a bit of a break until the afternoon. And right across the board, we return to a much more seasonal daytime high. The bulk of this low pushes its way in towards Quebec, but it's behind it that we see this trough that's going to extend over the Great Lakes. That's prompting these lake effect flurries, and that carries us right through the overnight, thanks to a strong westerly or northwesterly wind. As we head through the rest of our evening, lake effect flurries are going to impact us. Getting into the day tomorrow, we could see a little sunshine, that chance of flurries into the first half of the day, and then sunshine. We start to see really kind of beautiful second half to our day and then by Friday eight degrees on the positive side of things so we really go from zero to 100 real quick both ways and then as we get in towards the weekend not bad but yesterday just to give you some context we got up to 21.4 degrees the last record set back in 2000 was 14. So getting into the day tomorrow very seasonal as we head in towards Friday we kick off March eight degrees for the high three for the low ten apiece across the weekend a few showers but then really we settle into the first full week of March above seasonal very very mild we almost it's like it never happened today Michelle. Yes, thanks. Also tonight, tomorrow is not only a leap day, it's deadline day to declare whether your home is occupied to avoid getting hit with Toronto's vacant home tax. What you need to know still ahead. Another case of travel related measles has come up this time in the Hamilton area. CTV's health reporter Pauline Chan has more on who may have been exposed and the growing concern in Canada. The latest measles case is in a child from Brant County who had recently traveled to Europe and officials are warning that people may have been exposed to the highly contagious virus at the following locations. On February 23rd, aboard Lufthansa Flight 6584 from London Heathrow Airport to Pearson International. At Pearson Airport Terminal 1 between the hours of 5.55 p.m. and 9 p.m. At Brantford General Hospital Emergency Department between the hours of 8 p.m. and 2.02 in the morning. And on February 24th at McMaster Children's Hospital Emergency Department between the hours of 6.51 a.m. and 2.09 p.m. Toronto Public Health recently began a series of vaccination clinics for students who have fallen behind in their regular shots. And this woman says the current measles situation is scary. Just, uh, it was just a matter of timing and getting here, but we... We had been, uh, we're still within the time frame of the four to six years, but uh, just wanted to make sure that she's as safe as she can be. The potential is there for Toronto residents to have been exposed to measles at Pearson Airport. It's known to spread through the air. And what that means, it can stay on surfaces like door handles and light switches, but it also can stay in the air. And it can stay in the air for up to two hours after somebody who's infectious has left that space. If your child is younger than 12 months and so has not received their measles or MMR shot, they can still get it. We recommend getting a dose before you travel if you're over six months of age. Measles, we say, is the canary in the coal mine. Yeah, yeah, outbreaks are rather explosive. They're pretty obvious. And, uh, and you know, you don't need that much of uh, lowering of vaccine rates before you're susceptible to them. A single shot of measles vaccine will offer you 85% protection. The full two doses will get you to over 95%. So contact your doctor if you have concerns about exposure or your level of vaccination. Pauline Chan, CTV News. Toronto General Hospital has been ranked the third best hospital in the world in a new ranking from Newsweek. The magazine's annual list collects data from 2,400 hospitals across 30 different countries. It compares a range of metrics and opinions from experts. Toronto General got the bronze, citing factors including the hospital's research and work in organ transplants. No other Canadian hospital has made the list in the six years it's been published. The Mayo Clinic and Cleveland Clinic in the U.S. took the top spots. A Canadian competition aimed at helping save lives during medical emergencies in space has announced its winner. So we do this with a mobile app that condenses all the relevant knowledge of the first hour of the resuscitation. So we're talking about Montreal-based MD Applications will receive $500,000 in grant funding for winning the Deep Space Healthcare Challenge, run in part by the Canadian Space Agency. Their Easy Resus app condenses key information on drugs and equipment so first responders could focus on other matters during life-threatening situations. Organizers say health solutions for space are also of use in remote communities on Earth. Some sad news from the world of entertainment tonight. 
Comedian Richard Lewis has died. Seeing the book cover, it, I couldn't sleep. I was alone. I went, oh my God, there's a pronoun in the basement. Oh my God. Lewis is known for exploring his neuroses on stage and got the nickname the Prince of Pain. He also took on acting roles in Mel Brooks' Robin Hood, Men in Tights, and more recently in HBO's Curb Your Enthusiasm, opposite Larry David. Lewis suffered a heart attack Tuesday at his L.A. home. He was 76. Disappointment for thousands of Adele fans today as the singer postpones several of her shows in Las Vegas next month. Adele took to social media, revealing she's been dealing with a stretch of illnesses and they've taken a toll on her voice. Shows on all five weekends in March will be moved to a different date. The singer telling fans, I love you, I'll miss you like mad, and I'm sorry for the inconvenience. As a remake of 80s film Roadhouse gets set to debut, it's become the subject of a new legal battle. We like to fight. You ever win? No one ever wins a fight. Both versions of Roadhouse center around a bouncer who gets caught up in a wider web of crime and violence. Variety reports the screenwriter of the 1989 original has filed suit against Amazon Studios alleging copyright infringement and unauthorized use of AI to replace actors' voices. A studio source says the claims are unfounded. A musical telling the story of legendary trumpeter and singer Louis Armstrong is officially heading to Broadway. The show has been through stagings in several cities, including Chicago. A Wonderful World stars Tony Award winner James Monroe Iglehart. It tells the story of Armstrong's musical career from the perspectives of his four wives. It begins on Broadway in November. After the break, TikTok's pool of songs is becoming more shallow as the royalty battle escalates. An update on the music being removed, muting some of the platform's viral videos. It's, it's quite cold and we all are waiting to cook something because the power is out. Updating our top stories, thousands of homes are without power due to strong winds which have arrived in the city along with a cold front. It's the latest change in what's been a wild weather day, which has seen double-digit highs plunge to double-digit lows with the wind chill. Zionism equals death and then my name. How did you feel when you saw this? I had never felt so sad in my life. A student at the Ontario College of Art and Design says she hasn't been to class in weeks over concerns about her safety. She says she was the specific target of an anti-Semitic threat and claims the school has not done enough to address the issue. Cockroaches and bed bugs, they bite us like nothing else inside. Residents of an overflow shelter in Mississauga are demanding action over what they call disgusting living conditions. However, they say the overburdened system does not give them anywhere to go. Time to check the latest from the world of business. Here's Amber Canwar from BNM Bloomberg. National Bank hit a record high after the Quebec-based lender's profit increased and topped expectations in the latest quarter. That was helped by a revenue boost in Canadian banking as well as capital markets. However, the bank did set aside more money for loans that could go bad if the economy were to soften. And profit at Royal Bank beat analyst estimates in the quarter. It was driven by stronger than expected performance in capital markets and wealth management. However, expenses in Canada's largest bank climbed faster than revenue, and their LA-based bank was a drag on results. Like National Bank, RBC also increased its provisions for loans that could go bad. Alberta is banning renewable energy projects on agriculture and scenic lands as Alberta Premier Danielle Smith's government continues to oppose Trudeau's clean energy policies. And this is going to prohibit renewable developments on certain classes of agriculture land and wind projects will not be permitted within 35 kilometer buffer zone around pristine viewscapes designated by the province. Now let's take a look at some of the closing market numbers, starting with the Canadian dollar. It was down only modestly, around 73 cents U.S. Oil prices held in at $78 per barrel, while Canadian oil prices were up more than a dollar to around $61 per barrel. It was a down day for the TSX. 
losing about 75 points. That's the latest in business. I'm Amber Canwar in the BNN Bloomberg Newsroom. An important reminder this evening to Toronto homeowners. Tomorrow is the deadline to submit your vacant home tax declarations for 2023. Owners are expected to let the city know if their residential properties were occupied or vacant for most of the year. And they could face a 1% tax on their home's current value assessment if they were unoccupied or if no declaration is made. The declaration form can be simply submitted online or in paper form. The city is getting $5 million from Ottawa to install electric vehicle chargers for municipal vehicles. 526 new sites, including 40 faster chargers, will serve a wide variety of vehicles in the city's fleet, including staff and emergency services. The federal government or that federal environment minister was on hand for the announcement, highlighting ongoing efforts to reduce vehicle emissions. The city, meanwhile, matched the $5 million from the feds to build the charging network. The City of Toronto's fleet plays an important leadership role in advancing technologies that aim to significantly reduce environmental impacts, improve vehicle efficiency, reliability and safety, while reducing life cycle costs and associated impacts. Work is also underway to bring more charging stations to parking lots for public use. More music is disappearing from TikTok as a rights dispute with Universal intensifies. Videos on TikTok often feature popular songs in the background, but the library of tracks available went down significantly at the end of January. That's when Universal Music Group removed its artist catalog, citing a failure to reach new licensing deals with the platform. TikTok says it's now muting audios where Universal has, been, has the publishing rights amid concerns that deal will expire as well. UMG hasn't commented. With RRSP contributions due tomorrow, a new Amex survey shows financial concerns are shaping many Canadians' mindsets for 2024. Out of 1,000 adults surveyed, 39% set New Year's resolutions about money beating out resolutions related to physical wellness, mental wellness, and the environment. The top listed focuses for those resolutions included growing savings, paying down debt, and sticking to a budget. The Business Report is brought to you by Canadian Western Bank, the bank built for business. It's become common to use crowdsourcing platforms to help those in need, whether they're the victims of a tragedy or having difficulty with medical costs. What about turning to the kindness of strangers online simply to make ends meet? Turns out more Canadians are doing just that. Here's CTV's Kimberly Fowler. Yeah, sometimes it's a choice between uh, food and rent and bills. Sami Awaji lives on his own in Sandy Hill and with no help from his family is struggling to get by. In December, he set up a GoFundMe campaign asking for $5,000 to help pay for rent, food and get out of debt. Everything's insanely high. Like um, the cheapest place I could find was here and I live in like a closet that costs $1,300 uh, a month. Awaji isn't the only one turning to the crowdfunding platform for help. GoFundMe, seeing a massive increase in the number of people using the platform to help cover the cost of living. In terms of types of things that we're seeing, it's really, it's really the basic necessities which we see dominate the types of campaigns on our platform. Between 2020 and 2023, GoFundMe reporting an increase of 274%. That's about 215,000 campaigns that mention cost of living across Canada that help raise over $480 million. In Ottawa, over 1,500 campaigns raised over $8 million. We are seeing this absolutely everywhere, and it's just evident of the, the hurt that people are facing. The housing crisis, soaring rent and home prices, and increased unemployment. GoFundMe research also showing where business owners are turning to the platform for help, like Carl Schoenrock, who runs a farm in Manitoba. It would be nice to get to the, our goal of $40,000, but it, that hasn't happened yet. But so far, we're still here. Sean Rock says his farm hasn't been able to bounce back post-pandemic amid high inflation and interest rates, and his GoFundMe campaign is helping his business stay afloat. I'm, I'm just really, really appreciative to GoFundMe because without them, I wouldn't be here. My entire life would be, would be over as we know it. Kimberly Fowler, CTV News. Tonight, the resurgence of measles in Canada. You have to have high rates of measles vaccinations to prevent outbreaks. 
Concerns over rising confirmed cases and the alarm over growing vaccine hesitancy. That story and more later on CTV National News. Seven pilots fired up their jet engines in Dubai today, but they weren't flying planes. How cool is that? They hosted their first ever jet suit race. The pilots zipped along a route in the United Arab Emirates wearing 1,500 horsepower suits, more powerful than most luxury sports cars, and use the same kind of fuel that powers airliners. Organizers chose the water site to allow for higher speeds and for safety. And if it looks like the character Iron Man, well, the pilots say that is exactly <laughs> what it's like. But a little too windy for jet suits tonight. No, it is. We're still looking at really strong wind gusts really right throughout the rest of our evening and into the start of the day tomorrow. So just keep that in mind. That wind chill will be wicked as we head through the rest of our evening. Uh, layers are going to be key if you're going anywhere. The good news is we do see a bit of a break as we head into the day tomorrow. We're at minus four right now. Feels like minus 13. Winds sustained at 41 kilometers an hour, but those gusts are still close to 74. The good news, and I promise there is good news as we get in towards Friday, back above seasonal as we welcome in the month of March. So tomorrow, probably the most seasonal day that we've had almost the entire month. And then we go back up above as we welcome in a brand new month. An all new month already. Thank you so much, Jess. That's it for us, but be sure to join Omar Sachedina tonight at 11 for CDB National News, followed by Zoraida Allman with our next local newscast at 1130. In the meantime, our coverage continues anytime on CP24 and online at ctvnewstoronto.ca. For Jessica Smith and all of us here at CTV News, thank you for watching and have a great night.